Intel, Nvidia, and AMD have had all sorts of rumors hitting the internet, and the 4090 is going up in price. Let's talk about it. So starting off with Intel, there's been some more rumors going around, especially with the whole Geekbench, which keep in mind again, guys, this is all out. We're not testing it internally. This is all somebody else doing it. So take all of this with a grain of salt. Something that was very fascinating to me is that originally the, I was at the i7-265K, excuse me, because these names are all out of whack too. So we got to get used to these. Um, they were saying that it was gonna be about a 10% decrease in performance, but the new rumors that have come out, now they're saying there's a 15% increase in boost compared to the 14700K. Again, this is all rumors. We don't like to kind of like say this is the final numbers until we test it in house, even though when they do come out with final reviews, we still like to do the internal testing. So you can see here the chart itself. I'll zoom in here a little bit for you all. Um, the 285K, the i9, they're saying that the single threaded performance is hitting 3450, which to give you an idea, internally an i9 1400K is hitting around 3100. In their chart here, they're saying the i9 hit 3089, off by like 10 to 20 points. Nothing crazy, so we're seeing like an 8% increase in performance on the single threaded side for the i9 1400K to the 285K. And then in multi-threading performance, uh, it's scoring 20,881, the i9 1400K is. And then the 285K is scoring 22,997, so 2,300 essentially. Again, an 8% increase. This is all rumors, so hopefully this is true because we do get a nice increase in performance. And as you all know, Intel did take away hyper-threading completely. So instead of 24 cores, 32 threads, now it's 24 cores, 24 threads. So we actually got a reduction in hyper-threading because they're removing it completely. Uh, but they're saying that there is an increase in performance, which is all we really care about at the end of the day. There's another thing too that I'm really looking forward to, and I really do hope they actually get these results in. Intel did promise um, better TDP, which is, as you guys all know, the last chipset the i9s and very little amounts of i7s. Again, we haven't had an in-house yet, but we've had a lot of i9s be defective over time. They literally degraded over time because of just how much power they were drawing, even on idle, in an idle state, uh, which they did release a new BIOS, I think two days ago, uh, and they said they finalized and found the problem with it. So hopefully the new BIOS does fix all those issues um, and we can move forward on at least with the 14th and 13th gen CPUs. So hopefully this does translate into real world results. And the rumor is as of October, they're supposed to be releasing. So this month uh, is hopefully the rumored announcement and release. If that's the case, we're gonna have a very interesting month. Next up, AMD Ryzen X3D series. Let's see what happens here because I think what AMD is trying to do here is they got a little whiff that Intel was coming out in October and AMD was like, yeah, well, we got something else as well. Again, this is all rumors. So hopefully this is the case. But the rumor is currently is that they're releasing a 9600X X3D and a 9800X3D as well in October. Uh, these rumors, if they are true, I feel like it's gonna be a very interesting month between Intel and AMD. We're gonna go back to that whole, which one should I choose? And we can't wait to get our hands on both of these because this is gonna be a great opportunity uh, for AMD to kind of take the lead a little bit as long as Intel, well, we'll see, they might hit the road on this one. If they do really good with Intel on their, on their newest launch, AMD might have a little problem, but the 9800X3D is still gonna be eight cores, 16 threads, which to me, I don't think that's enough. Uh, they do really need to hit it home and increase the core count on these X3Ds. So hopefully like the 9900X3D or the 9950X3D, there's also rumors that they might have the 3D vCache on both CCDs, which is, if that's the case, that's gonna be a killer CPU. We don't have to worry about the whole parking cores and all this other mess, which is one of the biggest problems we had with the last X3D chipsets with the 7900X and the 7950X3D. Uh, there was just too many issues with them, so most people kind of went back to the 7800X3D, which brings me to another good point. If you guys go on the market right now to look for a 7800X3D, the prices have skyrocketed. They're upwards of 550 to $600. Again, they're probably EOL now. So they're probably getting ready for the launch of the 9800X3D. So that is the rumor and I really do hope it does happen. Again, like I was stating before, uh, the 9800X is gonna be right here at the bottom if you guys can see that. So eight cores, 16 threads once again. So pretty much the same as the 7800X3D. Most likely some increased you know, frequency, some increased cache. Uh, I hope there's a nice jump because as we all know, the 700X3 still is the king uh, from AMD when it comes to just true gaming performance. 
The 9950X did really good as well, uh, but you do have the extra 1632 cores, so that's still a very good CPU for full on like production gaming all around. But if you just want just gaming, 7800X3D is still a great deal if you can find them. Now they're, like I said, they're very expensive. Rumored for this is October to November uh, release time frame. So if that's the case, again, like I said, Intel and AMD are definitely gonna be battling out this month. Speaking of AMD, the AMD Ryzen 9700X and 9600X got a nice little boost as in a BIOS update. They went from 65 watts all the way to 105 watts. So there should be a little increase of performance there. People are stating around five to 10% increase, which is a nice jump. They definitely needed that. 65 watt TDP was interesting when I was testing it. It was, it was very low. Uh, temperatures were fantastic, uh, but I did notice uh, frequencies were kind of going up and down quite a bit. So I think giving it that extra headroom, it'll solidify and kind of have more stable high frequency, especially on the boost. Now it's an AMD GPU. So as we all know, uh, AMD has been working on RDNA 4. There's a little problem though. And again, this is all rumors. We don't know exactly. We're not sitting at the headquarters of AMD, but the rumor is that RDNA 4 is going to be delayed due to the reason is that there's still too much RDNA 3 GPUs out on the market. They don't sell as good as Nvidia. Prime example this year alone, I think we've only sold four AMD GPUs and it is on our website. It's, it's right there, right next to the Nvidia GPUs. Most people tend to lead towards Nvidia uh, just because of the features. It's more well known. They're definitely heavily advertised. So that's something you're gonna see a lot more of so people understand it more. So hopefully with the RDNA 4, they, they don't delay it too much uh, just because we want competition. As, as a consumer level, we want Nvidia and AMD to battle it out, which AMD did talk about they're not gonna be doing any like crazy flagship GPUs to compete against the 4090 or the next rumored uh, GPUs from Nvidia. It's gonna be more around the 4080. So the thousand price point, they don't, I don't think they wanna get into that $2,000 price point, which to be fair, um, that is very expensive uh, and it's understandable, but hopefully they can come out swinging with RDNA 4 and, and hopefully take out that 4080 bracket and below. So that way we have some competition and Nvidia just doesn't continue just to roll over in this industry. All right, moving on to the Nvidia GPUs. Lots of rumors to cover here. Uh, the rumors of the specs of the RTX 5090 and the RTX 5080. So I will tell you, looking at the rumors of the specs themselves, the 5090, let's start off with that one. It is very interesting, uh, the specs that are rumored to be coming out of this card. This thing, if it does come out with these specs, it's gonna be a beast um, of a GPU. Just And just to give you a quick reference. So 5090, uh, so SMS is you're looking at 170 versus 128 of the 4090, 84 on the 5090 and 76 on the 4080, right? So a pretty decent jump there, almost double on the 5080 and right around a good 40% increase uh, from the 4090. CUDA core count, we're looking at 16,300 for the 4090 and 21,000. 760, again, a nice little 25, 30% increase on the CUDA cores. And then compared to the 5080, it's pretty much doubled. Uh, 10,700 to 21,000. Uh, if you notice the 5080 and the 48 are not too far off, but we'll, we'll get into that here in a sec. VRAM, this is gonna be a really nice one. GDDR7, 32 gigs of VRAM. If that is the case, that's gonna be crazy. 24 gigs of VRAM was quite a bit already. Um, even on my own setup with the 4090, I was, I think the most I hit was like 18 to 15 gigs of VRAM. Again, I'm at 1440p. 4K gaming, I feel like this is gonna be something that'll definitely take advantage of 32 gigs of VRAM, which is crazy. I, I never thought I would see a 32 gig VRAM GPU, but here we are. Memory bus interface, we're doubling from a 5080 to a 5090. You're looking at five, 256 to 512. That's a huge difference. And then 384 from the 4090 and 256 for the 4080. So same across the board there. Uh, memory speeds, 20 gigabytes per second uh, between the two cards and 21 and 22 versus the 48 and 4090. Not too crazy there. Memory bandwidth, we're jumping up 792 gigabytes per second from the 4090 to the 5090. So again, this is an 80, 70% increase uh, on the memory bandwidth, um, which is kind of crazy. Now, with all those crazy beefy specs that I just read off to you all, obviously there's gonna be an increase in TDP. This is the part that a lot of us are kind of like, crap, what's gonna happen? We'll see. So TDP for this GPU is gonna be a whopping 600 watts. Again, this is rumored. And if this is the case, that is maxing out the single PCI Gen 5, pretty much cable, just that one cable is gonna be maxing out at the 600 watts, which is what they're rated for. So just for your future, if you're planning to build a PC yourself, you have to be careful. There are some power supplies that have a limit 
on their actual Gen 5 cable. You gotta look for the ones that say 600 watts. Make sure you get that. There's some that limit to 450, um, and you don't wanna get one of those because you'll be stuck at 450 and you'll be pretty much bottlenecking your 5090 uh, at that point. I don't know, we'll see if it even runs. Uh, it'll, it'll turn on, but it might not even run its full potential. So again, rumored on this is they're stating uh, towards the end of this year or beginning of next year. That is all rumored as of right now. Uh, a lot of rumors are saying it's CES announcement and possibly uh, February, something like that, uh, launch time. So again, 5091 up in wattage. Also the 5080, as you guys can see here at the bottom, it went to 400 watts. So from the 320 watts from the 4080, now we're jumping up to 400 watts as well. Um, spec wise between the two, like I said, it's not that far off. We're looking probably like a, I'm gonna see like a 10% increase across the board from a 4080 to 5080 which is still very good. Now there's another rumor circling the internet right now that they're stating that the 5080 is gonna have two variants. One that's a 16 gig model and a 24 gig model. So if you guys remember the last generation when they did launch the 40 series, there was actually rumors of the same exact thing. It was a 12 gig model and a 16 gig model. What Nvidia did was they never launched the 12 gig model, they waited on it and they rebranded it as a 4070 Ti. That upset a lot of people. Hopefully they don't do the same thing this time if, if they do decide to release uh, two variants. Um, 24 gigs of RAM would be nice on a 4080 because again, at that 4K resolution, you're definitely gonna be hitting that 16 gigs pretty easily. Uh, so if that's true, that'd be cool. We'll just have to see what the prices is and we'll have to see what the TDP wattage is on as well. So again, rumored towards the end of the, of the year or beginning of 2025. Now moving on to the 4090 I'm not gonna say shortage, but price increase. Supply and demand is what's happening right now. So if you guys have followed my personal Twitter account, even just the PowerGPU account on Twitter, um, I've talked about this. There, We were telling people that there was gonna be some sort of, I wouldn't say shortage because they are available, but the pricing is going up on these GPUs. Prime example I'm gonna give you is the, where's it at? This one right here. The 4090 Liquid Supreme from MSI used to go for about $1699 to $1749. It jumped up to $19.99, so now it's at $2,000. Also, the Gigabyte version as well went up to $19.19. The Gaming X Slim is at $19.49 when it used to be right around the $17.50 to $17.99 price point. So we're already seeing around $150 to $200 price increase on all these GPUs across the board. And then the White Strix is now at $22.49.97. When they originally announced the White Edition, it was like $20.99 or 2149, right around there. So it did go up about 100 to $150. Uh, so we're clearly seeing some jump uh, in pricing. So let me know in the comments if you guys are still interested in a 4090. If you're in the market for a PC for the holiday season or before the end of the year, now would be the time to purchase one. We're only in October and we're already seeing the shortage on the 4090s. So make sure to purchase one as soon as possible because towards the holiday season, we're gonna be very limited on quantity of pretty much a lot of hardware. Get ahead of the holidays and buy now at powergpu.com.